Okay, I give the picture step one, before the transition. That day I was working in the agency. We had a very big presentation for a pitch to get a new client. And you know, usually in the creative agencies, you have to present the creative work to your creative director, to your CEO. If they approve, you go to the client. It's normal. But that day, I mean, in late afternoon, in the night, I had something that for me was very important. It was, I, I had a training in a transformational uh, uh, tool, and I had my first assignment for one client. There were a team waiting for me in the night, nine o'clock, to run this session. For me, it was absolutely important. But, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, you know, bosses and directors understand you are in a hurry, and they begin to use their power, postponing the meeting. Mm -hmm. So at 3.30, okay, can I present you the, the work? No, no, Rico, uh, we we'll see you in an hour. Okay, 4.30. No, 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 we we'll see you in half an hour. 5, 6, 6.30. And I'm really in anxiety. Because a part of myself knew that was very important, not for the job. Because it was a new beginning. Could be a new beginning, new activity. So at 7 o'clock, I, I couldn't have the meeting. And I felt really that usage of power of my bosses, because they felt I wanted to go, and they said, no, you stay, you stay, we postponed the meeting. Then at 7.30 I said, okay, fuck, I'm going, bye bye, ciao. <laughs> they were all in the meeting, they looked stared at me, what are you doing, ciao, and I went. Uh, I went to that session with lots of anxiety, because my materialistic part was very afraid, I was attached to my job, and to that man, okay? But my spiritual part, that I would call from now on, my intuitive part. No, there was something you know, important there. I didn't know the plan yet, but it was like a flavor. I have run the worst session ever in my life that night. It was a complete disaster. So a disaster from one side and a disaster into the agency. But what I've learned from that, that usually when you know, the new is trying to come in your life, you know, your, our intuitive part is not talking our language. It talks through symbols, through flavors. It's a felt sense of something new that may be arrived in your life. So you cannot understand. How can you trust that if you don't understand and you don't see the plan in a clear way yet? Stop. Another picture. The transition. Um, the day after, and that, that's, that's nice, the day after, they called me in a meeting immediately. Enrico, what did you do last, last day? It was, I was like a school child, like this. I, mean, I was 40 now. And they were, you don't do blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm sorry, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, no, no, no. Okay, I understand. It's a very, very important pitch. And, uh, and I was more and more stressed and stressed. Then someone talked at my place. Someone said, you know, guys, I'm totally fed up with that. I'm fed up with you. I'm fed up with the agency. I'm fed up with all this story. I am going to resign in six months time. And I said, oh my God, in myself, who has taught? It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I know that that feeling that with the head inside, that, you know, something very strange. So, and they were absolutely, you know, they didn't believe in that because I've always been a person, you know, a yes man. I've always been at work a yes man. And, and we discussed a little bit, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, um, the energy totally changed. They took it very seriously and then they accepted my choice. Then I spent 45 minutes in the toilet of my office. <laughs> <laughs> so my intuitive part has taken the control and now my materialistic part was totally in tragedy. In tragedy. <laughs> I couldn't go out from that toilet. Okay, another picture. <laughs> so, you know, yes, materialistic part and your spiritual part it seems to conflict very often. No? So, uh, I was really attached to some certainties, and usually that's an illusion. And my spiritual part was destroying those certainties. Uh, okay, and let's go to the day I gave the resignment letter. We all know rituals are very important. It's not the same to say, I will resign. It's not the same to get there and give the letter to the CFO. I did it, and you know, it's since, uh, well, four or five months passed by from that day, so I got used to the idea. I thought I got used to the idea. And when I gave the letter, I took my car and I was driving home, and again, anxiety. 
raised up, raised up. I had to stop. I couldn't drive my car. I was really, you know, in a state I never, really, I never experienced before. Then, okay, very slowly, <laughs> in Milan traffic, I went home and I entered my, my, my apartment, my, my wife was at home, like this, like a dead man walking. She knew I was going to, to give the letter, and like, we have talked for months, so okay, the, I mean, the decision was taken. And she saw me in that, in, in that condition, and, and she asked me, but what's happening? I don't know, I'm like dying. It's, I'm feeling like someone is bringing me to the patibolo, Daniel, how do you say in English? Yeah. yeah, so like I'm going to be killed, and my wife, that genius, said just this statement. Ah, yes, of course, she was cooking. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's your, it's your fake identity which is dying, at last. Oh, no, I had spent already 9,000 euros training in counseling. My wife did anything about counseling, but she got the point, that genius. And I could see the dead body there. And from that very moment, I began to feel free, and that fear was really, you know, evaporating. So, in change and in this dialogue, wives are very important. That's another <laughs> word. Um, so, another learning in this process is that sometimes this dialogue between your materialistic part and your spiritual part requires, at a certain point, a conscious suicide of what is fake about you, about what you're doing, maybe about your values. You know, it's really like taking the gun and you do it. It's quite difficult. And this is really the border you pass through. From that moment on, everything began to change. Um, then I found myself for uh, quite one year in the desert of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the dialogue was always this flavor that told me there's something good, it's right, but I don't see the plan because intuition does not give you that plan. And my materialistic part was in fear, was afraid of everything, I will not find a job. I remember after I gave the letter for a few nights, I was dreaming nightmares, me and my family in the street without a penny, you know, something like this, waking up in the middle of the night. So our materialistic part is very, very strong. Then what happened afterwards, and I had one point, uh, after one month I resigned, my wife had a very serious uh, health problems. So imagine my materialistic part, how reactive. Oh my God, I, we need all the money. We have uh, lots to spend in hospital and therapies. She's perfect today, so very happy ending. But the flavor of the other part was saying, it's perfectly right, you are at home. There's a plan on that. You can stay with her. You can really uh, engage in all that all together as a family. It's perfect. But you know, it, it was difficult to match the two. So it was a felt sense and it was fear. Uh, then I discovered, I think, the, I mean, one journey that for me has been really critical, the power of action. So, if we see materialism and uh, spirituality as a photograph, I mean, two parts of ourselves, you know, you see the stack, the block that this fight usually creates. But if you see them within a process, the process of change, the process of life, you begin to understand they have a role. And if you let them do the right job, it works. To me, it was absolutely key the action. So I began to do something little assignment, uh, first consultancies, but also uh, accepting and permit to myself to enjoy the new way of living, having more time, uh, working a little more uh, connected with my biorhythms, a totally different agenda, the space to have space for creativity and new ideation, meeting new people, uh, staying in Milano, discovering Milan, not just from seven, to nine when you go to work, and from eight to 10 when you come back home from work. And at a certain point, I permit myself to feel joy, not to feel guilty for my choice. And I discovered what I call the power of happiness. I mean, there is this statement in transformation techniques that when your mind is not convinced to a change, if your body will feel the pleasure 
of the new which is coming, your mind will convince itself that it's trying to do it. So you will act. But everything started from a sense of happiness, from the sense of I am living exactly as I am, uh, like uh, the feeling of a, of a kind of congruency, which is different than consistency. Congruency is about uh, uh, testing and verify that what you are doing has a sense of and sense inside in your body which says, yes, that's you. You are walking your own path. And that joy creates confidence and trust. Because the plan was not clear. I mean, the plan begins to be clear now, five years later. So it takes time to marry, <laughs> to marry my materialistic part and my intuitive part. But it was key to permit yourself to feel the joy and the happiness that tells you it cannot be wrong. If I feel that sense of wellness inside in my choice, even if I don't see really concrete results yet, that cannot be wrong. That for me was a key point. Okay, I, I try, and this is, I mean, the story. So I try to uh, systemize a bit in one slide, I mean, all the, the list of learnings. So my story was about change, and uh, the problem with change and the reason why it usually engages the materialistic part of yourself and your intuitive part is because usually it's a kind of letting go from one side and letting come, of course. But it's not easy, <laughs> as I experienced in my, in my short story, because letting go is about detachment. And materialism, I think, maybe also in the table yesterday, we discussed it a bit, it's about being attached to something. Sometimes it is to be attached to things, to a way of living, but the, what the experience about the attachment to your identity, to what you think you are in that moment, with this idea, with this illusion that you will be that forever, that it's certain you will be that forever, it, it's really, you know, the foundation of materialism. So it's, it's so, so difficult to suicide the fake. And, and the other problem is to let come, is that you have confidence, but human beings, you know, needs proofs to be confident. You know, we know, I mean, I, I'm not Baha'i, I have my, you know, my, my spiritual path, but we all know how much it's difficult to walk a faith. You don't have usually proofs, so you put your feet before you see the road. It's really the challenge in life. So, intuition gives you some flavors and you don't have proofs, so very difficult. And so, I mean, we see maybe two points of weakness of materialism and spirituality, because really I, I felt that it's not good and bad. We have to overcome this dualistic approach. I mean, spirituality has lots of points of, point of weaknesses. It does not give you proofs. It's just a flavor. So how can I believe? Well, materialism, ah, attachment, attachment, attachment. But on the other hand, what I experience is that, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, the problem, when you encounter the limits that both your materialistic part and spiritual part uh, creates in change, is that for one end, it's lots of fear. So if change requires you to let it go and detach, you will be, you, you experience lots of fear because you don't want to live. We really have this illusion that, you know, of, about certainties. And sometimes we use, and I used it, the cynicism not to believe in intuition messages. And if you see them, and you, maybe you think to your life, they are both two methodologies to disconnect. If I disconnect, uh, if I don't see the core of spirituality, I don't have the problem. Okay. Uh, if I listen to my fear, I will not change anything. So my certainties, illusionary certainties, I will keep them. But thanks God, I think both materialism and spirituality have a big point of strength. To me, materialism is about our attraction for action, our attraction for what in life you can touch. Our attachment for pleasure, for me, was key to permit myself to feel the pleasure of the new choice without feeling guilty at all. So we do need our capacity, material capacity, really to create, to manifest. It's like when you breathe out, you are manifesting. Without it, spirituality, it's a conversation at a tea time, in my opinion. You have to put in action your spiritual intuition, otherwise it's, 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 it's a nice talk. And spirituality allows you to sense your congruency. 
And in my story, I mean, this is not the rule, it's just sharing my story and one single learning, this is key to begin to dance with the two parts. So the sense of congruency in a choice uh, that you cannot really see as a plan, you don't have yet results, is that feeling. If you would not have developed our spiritual part, we, do, we didn't have the antennas to detect the sense of congruency and that sense of happiness. So you are dead, you never change anything. And last stimulus, if you see, I mean, everything in a process, in the process of change, which is the process of life, because at the end life is about change. The day you, you stop changing, maybe you, you begin to die a little bit, but it's psychological and also biological standpoint. So life is about change. And, uh, and really materialism and spirituality play really an incredible role within change. So my story was, first listening to an intuition that comes from that part, you know, our attraction for the divine level of living, of life. And thanks to our materialistic need to do things, to touch, to experience, you put a flavor in action. And you can only understand that spiritual flavor if you act it. Because then you'll see results and you'll have proofs. Uh, first, it's not concrete proofs. It's that sense of happiness that tells you it cannot be wrong. If I feel better, it cannot be wrong. So I must be confident in that. I will proceed if I don't see the wrong. Then also, you know, concrete results may come. And then results, because if you go on, you, then you will have results. I did not die, uh, <laughs> I, did, I, uh, I did not experience poverty in this transition. So then you have results. And when that happened, the circles continue. And now I'm playing with my two parts, saying, OK, give me more. So more challenges, more challenges. I, I want to try a new dream, even more impossible. I want impossible dreams to act and sense and see results and then I want another dream and sense and act and sense and see results. And yet in the book that Daniel showed, it's really you know one of these impossible dreams. Uh, it, it was my dream to put some thinking uh, about what I feel important in, in a book, print it on paper and uh, in my past way of living and way of relating with materialism and spirituality, I wouldn't even try to write this book. And that time I began to write it, and then I found, I mean, randomly, the publisher. At a, at a, when I gave a lesson in Bocol University, and there was the publisher, we began a conversation. I was in the middle of the book, and he said, yes, I, I'm interested. And then it's here. Nine months later, it was published. Incredible. Here is like, like, like they, how they collaborate, how they dance together at the end. So in the process, each of them is playing their role. So let them dance. Let them dance. That was maybe my final learning. So let them dance. Let each of the two parts uh, do the right job. Okay. And uh, in my in my story, without my intuition, I couldn't find any different direction. It was not a plan. It was just going east and not west. Nothing more I knew. But thanks to really our need really to see results and having proofs, you can make it happen. So I think this is a very nice dance. Last point is uh, in organization. So one reflection I made is that when I work in organization, at the end I see the same system working. Because uh, it's, it's, it's not mine. It's, uh, this, is, uh, this thinking is from uh, Issa Sparrer and Matthias Varga, that are studying organizations. And they say every successful organization is like that thanks to the fact that he take, it takes care of, of, of to three dimensions of the organization. That could be one person, this triangle, it's each of us, or an organization. One is the level of dream. We'll be working on dream afterwards, Daniel, isn't it? So you cannot survive if you don't have a dream as an organization. So, I mean, the topic of purpose, your intent, why are you doing what you do, I mean, this topic, I mean, which is raising, raising, raising the attention of people in the in the organizational literature. <coughs> then you need order, you need discipline, yes. You need your materialistic part. Here you agree really to count on your spiritual, organizational level, but then you need also discipline to put in place and act. 
And action, of course, is key. You don't see a result, you don't believe in your dream, your dream goes away. And uh, one interesting reflection is that if the company does not take care of all the three, there are some dysfunctions. Uh, thanks, I mean, thanks to NGOs. I met some NGOs, little one, that are 100% dream, but they don't care so much about order and action. So fantastic values, you do not impact. Or things to bureaucratic, post-Italiane, made post-Italian bureaucratic uh, companies. The order for the order, the rule. We work for this rule. The bureaucracy is the value. We work for it. Why are you here? Because, uh, because of the bureaucracy. This is the process. This is the protocol. That's it. And then, when, you know, typical situation, crisis, private company, the market changes, crisis, acting, acting, acting. We change strategies. Every, every week, people are completely disoriented by that management, and you're only into action. What happens? You become reactive, not an active and an acting company, a reactive company. If something changes in the context, then you change your strategy. So you don't have consistency through time. And uh, interesting, if you do not dream, uh, the, the type of conversation in the organization tends to change. So if you don't talk about dreams, about what you believe in, you will talk about what you are missing in that company. Mm -hmm. In other talks at the coffee machine, with blaming and blaming, what doesn't work, they should do this, they don't, should, don't do that. So this is the level of conversation. If you don't have a common dream, the conversation is going like that, to your needs, not to what you can create, not to the service you can give to the community, to the market. And uh, order, if you don't take care of your, of course, you have disorder. So it's nice, I mean, it's, uh, I found it very inspiring when I read it in the book, because really, it, it's again one metaphor of this conversation, this relationship between materialism, order and action, and our spirituality, our intuitive level. That's it, I want to thank you very much. I finished, Daniel, and uh, for this. <laughs> and I'm going to give some inspiration for the next work about reading in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.